it's your girl, your guardian angel. It is Sunday afternoon and you guys, I am beyond tired. And that is because this is what, I came back late Friday afternoon. So I stayed in the bed all day yesterday and did just a few things around the house. Um, but for the most part, I stayed in the bed so that I could get plenty of rest, um, recovering from the trip to LA. I tell people all the time to be proactive and not reactive. So prior to me leaving, I made sure that I had a whole lot of rest, um, and relaxation. And I did, I, I told you all, I packed over a course of days and, um, that sort of stuff to be proactive. Knowing that I would be probably tired, no, I had never flown, no, I had never taken a long trip like this, but in talking to people about how long the trip is and the journey and what traveling does to the body, um, and, and some of the people that I talked to um, are not living with a chronic illness, and so they were talking about how heavy it is for them. I was like, Lord, what can I do to be proactive about how what I do when I get home. So um, instead of having choir rehearsals and things of that nature from Friday evening and then all day Saturday, um, I had nothing on the schedule to do. And even if there was something that was to come up to be on the schedule to do, I would not have done it. So um, I, I literally stayed at home in my pajamas. I took a shower you know, and just relax. When I felt like it, I unpacked just a little bit, a little bit at a time to where I did not feel rushed. I mean, it's not a big deal. We're at home. So what's the point of trying to rush to try to get all this stuff unpacked? The OCD in me wanted to make sure that everything was back and put into their proper place so that there's no um, mess. And I say mess because it I mean, to me, a whole lot of stuff all over the place is mess. So, so that it wouldn't be junky or the house would be really, really clean for the rest of the week. So that OCD in me wanted to kick in and wanted to do that. But the, um, the proactivity mindset came to me and it was only a piece at a time get rest. So you've done, you've taken out two pieces of clothing, go sit down, rest for an hour. Okay, then you can go back and do another thing. And so that's kind of what I did. Um, and I, I, like I said, I rested until this morning. I normally get up earlier than I did this morning. I wanted to sleep in. So I slept in some. I still made it on time to church. Um, as you can see, I'm in a red, I'm in a red blazer. I'll actually throw a picture of me, a couple pictures of me, um, today right here. I hope you like those. So yeah, that's what I wore to church today. And um, and I will just say, I know you're like, you wore jeans to church. Yes, yeah, so the church that I attend, I um, mean, that I'm the choir director for, um, encourages people to come as they are. And, uh, and it's right in the area of a college. And so we are really trying to make sure that uh, college students feel comfortable and everybody in general, but the college students feel comfortable um, to come to church. Some of them didn't bring a whole bunch of church clothes to, you know, or, or dressy clothes, I should say, to um, to college. So to make them feel comfortable, he, you know, the pastor is like, well, just Wear whatever, come as you are. So I try to, as much as I can, um, kind of dress down a little bit, a little bit flair. You know me, I gotta still be me. I gotta still have bracelets. I gotta still have makeup. I gotta still have necklace and a blaze. I still gotta look nice. I'm not putting on tennis shoes. Um, but at the same time, um, so that people will be comfortable. So yeah, so that's what we do there. And so I went to church, I got something to eat just now and I'm back home. And so what I'll do now is get undressed um, for the evening, put on something comfortable to lounge around the house in, take my makeup off, put my feet up and relax. The game comes on in a little bit. 
Um, and so I'll be relaxing. I may catch it. You know, if I feel up to being awake, I'll catch it and watch the game. If not, I'll fall asleep and try to catch it before it goes off. Um, but whatever it is that my body needs today is been listed day. So I will be getting, um, I will be giving myself or Marquise will be giving me, um, my Benlista shot in just a little bit. And so you know that there's some side effects that come with Benlista. And a weekly now I've been kind of going through, it kind of knocks me down a little bit. But again, the pros outweigh the cons of taking it. I have a fewer, um, fewer flares that are so big that I end up in the hospital. Um, there was a time prior to, to YouTube, prior to me putting out Angel Lupus Journey on any platform that I was in the hospital more than I was at home. And so, although the Ben Lista has a lot of side effects, um, it is so much better to be on and not in the hospital and I can just deal with the side effects. They're not fun, but they're worth it at home. Um, going on the trip, uh, people are like, are you crazy? You're sick, why would you go on a trip? Okay, let me just say this. I, and this is just a very, I'm always transparent, but I'm gonna tell you something about my childhood. I um, was diagnosed with illness with, with, with lupus at 12 years old. So while everybody else was going to Disney World or going to all these different places, if I was traveling somewhere with my parents, it was to a hospital to see a doctor about something that was going on with me. It wasn't let me get in a plane and go somewhere that was extravagant and to have fun. Um, it took me till now to get on a plane, not because I was afraid or anything, but because I've literally always been sick and did not have the resources, did not know about the resources that I could have, that I could use to actually go somewhere. Um, and so it's like a light bulb, oop, went off and people were there to help me. I got this opportunity. This is what you need to do as someone who is chronically ill to be able to do this. So of course I, no matter how I might feel afterwards, of course I am gonna jump on it. One, because it's empowering and, and you wanna help others and you want to um, advocate for yourself as well as everybody else. But personally, that child in me was so, 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 so excited because I was able to do something that I wanted to do for the longest time. It's been 20 something years, you know, for the longest time, I wanted to be able to do different things that I haven't been able to do because I'm sick. I wanted to go to a college out of state. I was sick, I couldn't go. I went to a college here, right here in state um, so that I could be around the doctor, so that I could be around my family. My family has traveled around the world. My mom, you know, um, herself has traveled more than probably my dad has um, because she was in a singing group. But anyway, they're, them together have traveled across this, uh, I, I don't know, across how many seas. They've gone overseas. They've gone, they've done things. My brother has done things. Everybody has been able to go but me because of sickness. So when the opportunity presented itself and I can and I learned about all of these resources, realizing that I may be sick afterwards or I may be tired afterwards or I may have to take extra time to build up those spoons again, it's so, so, so well worth it. Never let anyone tell you that you can't do something. Find the right resources and keep asking until somebody can truly help you so that you can reach for the stars, so you could reach for your dreams, so you can do things that you thought that you never were going to be able to do. I know some people say, oh, flying, going to a different state. Oh, that's not a big deal. But to me, it was everything because it's something that I've always wanted to do. Not necessarily LA. Of course, I want to go to LA. I want to go everywhere. But just literally getting in the plane and going somewhere. That means so much to me because I haven't been able to do it. Um, and then with the history of blood clots or whatnot, I had to be very careful. And I didn't know that I could do uh, um, the compression stockings, uh, aspirin, or even um, something called Lovenox, a blood thinner, or just different things that, you know, dealing with the doctors, that the doctors will help you so that you're able to do these things because they want to see you be able to flourish and do the things that you want to do. 
it's amazing to tap into that. So I regret nothing. If I'm laid out in the bed for the rest of the week, that is just perfectly fine because I was able to do something that I've wanted to do for the longest, longest, longest time. And I was able to do it. I mean, it's just so, so, so amazing. Always reach for the stars. Never let anyone deter you from doing the things that um, you want to do or never, not just anyone, but anything. Don't just let illness, you know, or whatever keep you from doing what you want to do. Find a way to make it happen if it's in the right will for it to happen. Don't be stupid, God, because that's the wisdom. But uh, be proactive. Get yourself together. Prepare yourself. Do the things that you need to do. Find your resources so that you're able to do it. It's a wonderful experience. It's a wonderful thing. I am tired, but I am still so, so, so elated. I am hurting, but I am so, so happy. Regardless of all of that, I'll take it. I don't regret it at all. One of my good friends, who's also a lupus warrior, just did the Miami walk and it kind of put her out. Like she's had so many issues, you know, since then. And she's like, Angel, I regret nothing because I was able to do something that I really wanted to do. And we'll just kind of deal with the stuff as it comes along. Um, and we're doing all we can. We're doing being as proactive as possible. So we'll just get through it. And I feel the same way. I did, I did as much preparation as I possibly could for before and for now, for afterwards. It's okay that I feel bad. It's okay that my body hurts. It's okay that I need extra rest. It's okay that I need to go ahead and take my pain medicine. I'll do it. I'll do it again a thousand times because I was able to do something. And I know I've said it a thousand times in here, but I was able to do something I wanted to do since I was a kid, y'all, a kid. So I just encourage all of you to reach for the stars, do what makes you happy, find a way to um, to do those things. It's so important to your health to your well-being. And I say it's important to your health because you find that even in the midst, like right now, even in the midst of my pain, even in the midst of me being tired, even in the midst of me getting tired as I'm talking to you all, um, it helps with your health because when your mindset is, is in a good place and you're happy and you're set and you're focused, you can accomplish anything. You can climb the highest mountain. Your mind and your determination will get you through anything. It makes your worst days the best days. Even though you're in pain, you are on top of the world and you're empowered to keep fighting. You're empowered to keep going. You're empowered to do whatever despite what else is going on. Make sure you have, you turn that good old mindset on, do what you want to do so you can have that mindset and keep going. That's all I have for you today. I know it's been a lot. It's been 12, almost 13 minutes of a lot. Um, and But I just wanted to truly come to you all as raw as I can be. I'm always raw, but as raw as I could be and tell you truly how I feel about the whole traveling thing while being sick. Some people say that it's not a good idea when some people who aren't chronically ill say that it's not a good idea and they don't see the importance of why you want to do stuff like that um, or why it's imperative that you that you reach for the stars and do stuff like that. So I wanted to come from that from a different perspective to tell you I'm with you. It's OK. I understand. And you can do it. Don't let anyone or anything keep you from doing what God has promised for you to do. If it's not in his will, it won't be done and it shouldn't be done. But if it's in his will, it can and will be done. So do it. Don't let anybody distract you or deter you from doing it. That's what I have to say today. You know what I always, always, always tell you and I will tell you to the end of time. I love you. I love you with the love of Jesus. I don't just say that just to say it. I say it because I truly mean it. I hope all is well in your life. I hope all is well in your family's lives. May your tomorrows be better than your yesterdays. Bye.